What we're going to talk about today real briefly is the effective asking of questions using tie-downs and tag-ons. I'm going to use the word tie-down for the most part for this quick lesson. Tag-ons are very, very similar, uh, but they do serve a different purpose. Typically, the only difference between a tie-down and a tag-on is whether you put it at the beginning or the end of a sentence. I'm going to refer to all of them as tie-downs because tag-ons you can actually use in a different way. And to explain, explain that briefly so that you have a good understanding of it, tag-ons, you can use them for two things. You can use them for dodging resistance, meaning uh, if you get an objection that you don't want to talk about at that particular moment because there's a more appropriate time later, tag-ons are a great way to do that. But the other way that you can tag, use tag-ons is for agreement. And that's actually what we're going to use them for today. So let's go ahead and show you three uh, quick sequences on how to effectively use tie-downs and tag-ons. Keeping in mind that what we're doing here with tie-downs and tag-ons is trying to generate a response from the customer. And to me, if I'm effectively asking questions and I'm asking these questions on purpose, I'm already prepared for my potential answers way in advance. That's the difference between a professional in sales and somebody who's selling on accident. Knowing what answers might come up and knowing what to do with those answers. So when we use tie-downs and tag-ons, we're typically going to get a yes or a no response. They're, they sound open-ended, but they're more of a closed-ended type of a question. So you'll see in our examples here. What I found uh, in my training throughout the U.S. and Canada is that a lot of folks have heard of tie-downs and tag-ons, but they've never been shown how to use them. So that's what we're going to do today. So using these tie-downs effectively, the first sequence we're going to talk about is putting the tie-down at the end of a sentence. Okay, Putting the tie-down at the end of a sentence. So we have the body of a question first, and this could be any question that you're asking, and they're typical trial closing questions. And I'll give you some examples here. And then what I'd like you to do as we go through the examples is uh, play this video a few times. Uh, managers, go through this with your sales staff, and use this for a training session because the best way to nail this and to really commit this to memory and understanding how effective it is is to role play and do some exercises and the role playing exercises I'm going to suggest today are pretty much on paper and having the sales staff write their own tie down and tag on questions and then you as the managers critiquing them uh, or the fellow salespeople as well your peers to make sure that you have a good understanding as to what these tie downs and tag ons are doing and the proper use of them so our first one here we've got the body of the question and in this first scenario we don't pause so we ask the question and we tie it down we ask the question and we tie it down and it's important that there's no pause here the reason for that is a planned pause in the right place is a highly effective tool but it needs to be used with the right type of sentence structure so that you can elicit a great response from the customer that you can use so here's some tie downs so you know what they are. These are some examples, and there's probably a few more, but this is a pretty good selection. This should cover just about anything you could ever come up with. Isn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't you? Aren't they? Aren't you? Won't it? Can't you? Couldn't we? Hasn't it? Couldn't it? Doesn't it? Don't you? Shouldn't we? Don't we? Don't you agree? Right? Now, when I rattle off a big list like that, it sounds very repetitive, so you need to keep that in mind. The overuse of tie-downs and tag-ons um, becomes annoying to people and annoying to the customers. So it's important that you learn all three of the sequences I'm going to show you here today and that you learn to mix them up and use them at the right times and not just simply use them because it's something new that you've learned. So kind of dive into this slowly as you start to use them uh, till you get that feel for it so you don't overuse them. So we start out with our question and we tie it down. Now what's important to note here in all of these tie downs but especially at the end is the tonality the control of your voice, the tone of your voice, it is a huge component in the way that we all talk and especially the way our customers hear us. You see if you lift your voice pitch up at the end of the sentence using the tie down it is more of a question. It's heard as a question by the customer. Now tag questions of course by their nature are questions but they are responded to as a question when you lift your pitch of your voice upwards like a question specifically meaning that a person tends to go inside their mind your customer will go inside their mind and search around to find whether or not they agree with you so they're looking for an agreement or a disagreement so in other words your answer is going to be yes or no most of the time on these 
and by bringing your pitch up at the end it'll cause them to look inside for the answer. Just as a sidebar here, uh, this is where NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming that I talk about sometimes in my classes comes in handy. The customer's physical response to these types of questions is just as critical and we're not going to go over that today, but where their eyes actually move when you ask a tie down or a tag on question will tell you how they think, let alone uh, looking for the right answer. So it's they're all fantastic tools in the psychology of selling. You know, selling is an art and a science to be mastered. And when you can really get it down, you can sell anything, anywhere to anybody. And your closing ratios will absolutely skyrocket. So we got the pitch going up. That turns it more into a question, and it causes the customer to look inside their mind and search around for the answer. Now, on the opposite side of that, conversely, if you drop your vocal pitch towards the end of the sentence, it's responded to as more of a command or an instruction. And that's what the listeners will do. Your customers will tend to do less internal processing and less looking around for the answer. And they will simply agree. Okay, so pitch down is more of a command or an instruction and pitch up is more of a question. And this takes uh, some practice. So what you do is you've got the body of the question. You don't pause, you tie it down. And then we come to the customer acknowledgement. This is just the place where you be quiet and allow the customer to answer the question. And as with all high quality questions and all high quality sales, you don't want to talk over your customer. You don't want to rephrase or reiterate the question unless it looks like you need to. Give your customer the amount of time that they need to search around for the answer because the answer to the question is critical because it's going to give you the next direction that you're going to go. And when we're looking for yes or no responses in these, we're looking for yeses, we're going to build value. And with no responses, we have an objection. That's great, too. Now we have something to close on. We have something to overcome. And our ultimate goal with questions is to close the sale. And once all the objections are gone, we have a deal. So this is the first way of using a tie-down, and I'll give you some examples here. Here's an example. The ability of the dinette to convert to a bed really will meet everyone in the family's sleeping needs, won't it? And all I'm doing is tying it down at the very end there, won't it, is my tie down. The ability of the dinette to convert to a bed really will meet everyone in the family's sleeping needs, won't it? And I'm looking for a response. If the customer was to say yes, then he's in agreement. I've met all the family's sleeping needs, and now I can throw in some additional value. So when it comes to the floor plan in this case, or this dinette in this particular case, I want to have my ace up my sleeve and I want to pull out something else that's special and unique or an extra feature on this dinette. So what you need to understand when you're doing these types of questions is this is part of your presentation skills and it's moving you towards the close by building yes momentum. If you get a yes you need to build additional value. If you get a no you have an objection not a problem. Here's another example using tie downs at the end of a question. The additional space the slide out offers really makes the interior more spacious than other RVs doesn't it? And that doesn't it is our tie down. What I'm doing is I'm demanding a response most of the time in this case and I'm going to get a yes or a no. If I get a yes in this example what else could I say? The additional space the slide out offers really makes the interior more spacious than other RVs doesn't it? Yes it does Chuck as a matter of fact it's pretty nice. You know one of the other things I didn't tell you about this slide out is we have a six foot two headroom instead of a five ten or a five nine headroom like most other RVs and that's going to make a big difference with your height isn't it? And I can tie it down even some more. So I'm going to build some additional value there. Now here's a great exercise. You can either pause this video here or continue on through and then play it again as many times as you like. But come up with three to five questions of your own using features and benefits uh, on RV specifically, putting tie downs at the end with no pause. So all you got to do is just think of a feature within an RV like you were doing a presentation and go ahead and Turn it into a question and grab one of the tie downs from one of the previous slides. Let's go ahead and go on to the next technique. 